Okay, in this video, we're going to look at graphing functions using transformations. Uh, it all cannot be summed up in this video. It's a very dense topic. It assumes that you've had some background in class doing some investigations with how transformation works. So it tries to bring some, some of your background knowledge that should be in place uh, into, into a solidified place with being able to do this skill. So. Uh, if questions arise from this, ask your teacher, uh, you know, try and maybe Google something else, uh, look, at, look at some information you feel might be missing. But uh, like I said, it assumes that you've had some background in, in this. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, graphing functions such as absolute value of x, uh, root x, and uh, x squared. These are considered to be what's called parent functions, and you should be familiar with that term. And we're going to be looking at these from the standpoint of them being of the form a times uh, f at x minus h plus k. And we've seen what these parameters of a, h, and k do already. Uh, a is the factor of vertical stretch or compression acting on the output values. Uh, its operation is multiplication, so that uh, word factor comes into play when we talk about the vertical stretch or compression. Also, you want to note that uh, you'll get a reflection when A is negative. Uh, H is the horizontal uh, rigid translation of the input values. And it's really important, you should have seen this in investigations in class, that you get the inverse result when acting on the input. So a little bold there around the IN in both those words to remember that. For instance, if you're looking at uh, F at X plus 3, it's actually going to go left uh, three units. Uh, and so when we talk about horizontal, we're talking about left and right, obviously. And if you had uh, a translation such as f at x minus 7, uh, where the x minus 7 is all in parentheses in the notation there, uh, it's going to go right 7. Now, the k translation is much simpler. It's much more straightforward. Uh, kind of term it was what you see is what you get. And k is the vertical rigid translation of the output values. We say what you see is what you get because if it says plus 7, it's actually going to go up 7. If it says minus 6, it's actually going to go down 6. Uh, it being the graph, uh, it being the output values in this case where we're getting a translation. So let's move on and take a look at this example here. I'm going to overlay this onto uh, sketchpad, just give me one second. And we're going to make a graph of this function which says f at x equals 2 times the quantity x minus 4 all squared minus 3. So the first thing we want to do is identify those parameters of a, h, and k in this. So we've got a equals 2, which is going to give me a vertical stretch um, the word I use is BAFO, by a factor of 2, and this is done to the outputs. Very important to recognize. And then you've got H uh, equals, equals 4, because again it's the inverse of what we see here inside the parentheses and k equals 3. So we've already started here with the parent function uh, of y equals x squared. If you notice, these dots are the ones you should really have committed to memory and be able to replicate those very quickly when doing a problem like this. You always want to start with your multiplicative factors here, which in this case is going to be uh, a equals 2. So what I do is I take all of these output values and multiply them by 2. Okay, so here this output value is in fact 4. You see me tracing it with the pen. It's going to become 8. Put a little x there for now because we also have other translations we're going to do after this multiplication. This value here I'm tracing with the pen. Its output value is 1. It becomes 2. This one is 0, it stays to be 0. This one is 1, when I multiply it by the value of a, which is 2. 
to get 2. And again, this one, which is 4 here, I'm going to get 8 when I multiply it by the, the factor of 2. Okay, now I'm going to apply the uh, H and K uh, translations. These are rigid translations. So H equals 4 means, again, the outputs are going to go right 4. And here, K equals 3. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a little mistake. K equals negative 3. The outputs are going to go down 3. Okay, that's the final translation, so I'm going to actually mark these with an actual uh, dot, not an X. This X is kind of like a little pit stop I made. You want to think about it. Again, you want to do your multiplications first because uh, they're easier to visualize. You don't have to do them that way. It's just a style of uh, approach that I've developed with this that I feel makes it easier for myself and for the students I teach. So what we're going to do here is take every one of these in order from left to right and translate them right four and down three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Take this one and go one, two, three, four. One, two, three. This one's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And then this one's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And this one's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And again, that was a rigid translation because the shape does not change. The shape did change when we got the vertical stretch uh, when applying A. So let's try and get this here, connecting the dots. Not so easy because I'm using a slate, not the smart board. And that turned out actually pretty well. Okay, now let's see if that holds up when I uh, when I actually use Sketchpad to um, see if in fact that's the translation I get. So. Here, let's see, uh, I'm going to make A equal to 2, and you see when I do, it hits those points. Oh, sorry, the reset button stuck. Uh, A equals 2, it hits those little pit stop points, I call them. And then we're going to make H equal to 4, which did move it over. And then we're going to make K equal to negative 3, which moves it down, and it seems like the graph matches. So just that I'm using the computer to check my work there. Okay, let's continue on with another example. And I'll change this to the absolute value um, template that I have in, in this uh, Sketchpad demo that I built. Okay, so we need to identify here um, the parameters of a, h, and k in this absolute value function where it says f at x equals negative 3 times the absolute value of the quantity x plus 2 minus 1. So we get a equals negative 3, which we notice right away is going to give us a reflection over the x-axis. It's going to give us a reflection and a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. That's a combination of the negative and 3 working together. H, its value, careful here, is the inverse of what you see. It's going to be negative 2. Again, when you work with the input, you get the inverse effect, whether this is an addition or subtraction on the input or a multiplication on the input. And that is going to give us a rigid shift, okay, and that's going to be left to, oh, sorry, a little interface stutter there on my pen, uh, left two units. And for K, what you see is what you get, it's negative one, and that's going to give me a rigid shift. Down two units. Excuse me, down one unit. Okay, so again, you can see in this graph, I've started with uh, the parent points for 
y equals the absolute value of x. Don't forget y and f at x are the same thing. And you've got to be able to like make those points uh, very quickly. A couple of little dots really quickly um, that represent that graph, because that is the graph that we are in fact transforming. Okay, so I'm going to transform all of those uh, points by a factor of negative 3, which gives me a reflection and a stretch. So this one here, this output, again, when the number's on the outside of the parent function here, like it's, this negative 3 is on the outside of the brackets, it's going to translate the outputs. So this value of 2 is going to become negative 6 with a little x mark, because it's an interim translation. This 1 is going to become negative 3. 0 doesn't change when I multiply it. Again, I'm multiplying these output values by negative 3. This one that's a 1 becomes negative 3. And this one that's a 2 becomes negative 6. And then I'm going to apply the translation here of going left two units and one unit down for all of them. So we go left two units um, just from all the points left to right. The way I just trace this, again, I'm going to start here, work my way to the right in an orderly fashion. So we're going to do left two and down one, and that's going to be an actual dot because it's going to be the final product of the graph. Here, left two, down one. Here, left two, down one. This one, left two, down one. And then this point, left two, down one. Again, that's going to be the final product. So it's a transformed graph from the parent function y equals absolute value of x. And let me just turn these slider controls on to see if that's, in fact, what we get when we perform the translation. First thing I'll do is make a negative 3. So you see, sorry, it's negative 2.9. Let me just push it over a little bit more. And that gives me my vertical stretch and reflection. And then the value of h was positive 2. I'm sorry, negative 2, because it was the inverse of what you see, because it's inside the absolute value bars. And then k was negative 1, and those graphs match up. So uh, I hope these two little examples here, uh, which I took some time to do, try to take my time on them, uh, give you a sense of how to graph using a translation. Uh, translation and transformation, those are pretty synonymous. Um, so, you know, feel free to watch them again. Feel free to practice. Uh, again, we assume that you did understand a couple of things, uh, that A was a vertical stretch or compression, as well as a reflection, uh, that K is a vertical rigid translation. Uh, but the hardest part about this is this H factor here. Not factor, but uh, parameter, we'll call it. Um, and again, it's that you get the inverse effect when you translate the input. So again here, just here we see that this 2 was translating the input. So we got the inverse effect of where it said plus 2. Uh, we got an actual minus 2 rigid shift, which took us to the left. Um, this is what happens anytime we translate the input. We get this inverse effect. It's a little hard. Um, to, to master, but once you do it, just memorizes the fact that you get the inverse um, relationship, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, it is a little trickier when you are multiplying the input uh, because that gives you the inverse effect of multiplication, which is uh, multiplication by a fraction, which instead of getting a stretch in the horizontal direction, you would get a compression in the horizontal direction. I'm going to leave that for another video, though because uh, it's kind of its own monster, and um, it'll give you a chance to think of it a little bit separately and then try to maybe integrate it with the skills you learned in this one. So look for that video if you get a chance. Uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to post it soon. And uh, hope you enjoyed this one and that it gives you a sense of graphing with transformations.